Thanks. Thanks for coming. This is the last talk of the day. So this is joint work with Fubi Chen and Matt Barriot. Okay. So let's start with the definition of constant satisfaction problems. So this is a very general problem. Given an instance i consisting of variable set b and the constraint set c, and uh, we want to find an assignment f that satisfies all the constraints. So CSP can express many problems like KSAT and system of linear equations and uh, coloring with Q colors and unique games. <coughs> so here we are interested in how the difficulty of the problem changes by varying constraints. So we want to parameterize CSP by using constraints we are allowed to use. So a CSP here is specified by a finite domain D from 1 to Q and the constraint language, gamma. Here, constraint language is a collection of relations over D, and the relation is just a set of R tuples. Here, R is RT of R. So let's see an uh, example. So for coloring with Q colors, the domain D is the set consisting of, of a set from 1 to Q, and the gamma has only one relation, R, consisting of tuples, a, B, such that A is not equal to B. So this R expresses the constraint that adjacent variables must have different colors. OK. So an instance of CSP specified by D and gamma is given by a variable set B and a set C of constraints. And each constraint is of the form RS, where R is the uh, is a relation taken from gamma constraint language, and S is a set of variables. Right. So there are a large number of works on finding satisfying assignments, that is, finding assignment F such that if we restrict F to S, then it must be a tuple in R for every constraint RS. And uh, classifying CSP, CSP is in, uh, has a, so class, so classifying CSPs in terms of gamma and, uh, well, well, studying computational complexity of CSPs and the uh, ratio between comp computational complexity and the gamma is a, uh, well, intensively studied work, in intensively studied topic. So here we want, here we want to study testing assignments to CSPs. So the first question is the following. Can we decide if an assignment, suppose that we are given an assignment, can we decide if an assignment satisfies a CSP instance or not? Then this is a very easy question because it can be tested, it, it can be decided in linear time very easily. We can just check each constraint is satisfied or not. <coughs> and the question we want to study here is can we more quickly test if an assignment satisfies a CSP instance? or is far from satisfying assignments. So this is the property testing framework. And the answer is, well, it depends on gamma. But sometimes we can do even in constant time. Uh, here, constant means that it is independent of the number of variables and, uh, well, number of constraints. So the main contribution of this work is the characterization of constant time testable gamma. Right. So let's look at the definition of testing CSPs. So a bit complicated. So we are given an error parameter epsilon, and then we are given a satisfiable instance i. Well, because we want to test whether an assignment is satisfied, Satisfy, uh, satisfying assignment or is far from satisfying assignments, an instance should be satisfiable instance because otherwise, well, we can always say no. So, and uh, void function w that sum up to one and uh, query access to an assignment. So we are expressly given an instance, but uh, we only have a query access to assignment. And uh, here, query access means that if we specify a variable, then it returns the value of that variable. Then output is the following. So 
if f satisfies the instance, then we want to output yes with high probability, say two tries. And uh, if f is epsilon far from satisfying i, then we want to output no with high probability. And uh, here, epsilon far means that for any satisfying assignment g, the distance between the, uh, the assignment f and g is at least epsilon, more than epsilon. And here, the distance between f and g is defined as the sum of weights wb such that f of b is not equal to g of b. So it's like a fraction of variable, fraction the variables that disagree. Okay. So there are several known results on this problem. So how does gamma affect the worst case square complexity? So for two coloring, we can test the variability of assignments with constant quirk complexity. And for two start, it is known that we cannot do in, in con with a constant number of queries, but we can do with a sublinear number of queries. And uh, for three coloring, three start, and three ring, we need linear number of queries. And for horn start, we require linear number of queries. And uh, it is known that the algebra associated with the CSP determines its query complexity. I'll describe the algebra later. And uh, for Boolean CSPs, it is known that a, uh, a trichotomy is known. So, which means that uh, there is the general condition, general characterization of constant query testable gamma and the not constant query testable, but sublinear query testable gamma and not sublinear query testable gamma. Okay. So, the main result of this work is the following. There exists an algebraic condition A such that if gamma satisfies A, then CSP D gamma is constant query testable, and otherwise CSP D gamma is not constant query testable. So what's algebra? So a key component of algebra is polymorphism. A function f is called a polymorphism of, polymorphism of gamma if for any ratio in gamma of RTR, the following holds. So if we pick any tuple from, gamma, uh, from R, uh, this is, oh yeah, if it's a KRT function, so if we take uh, any K tuples from R and uh, apply F coordinate wise, then we get uh, another tuple B1 through BR, and the B1 through BR should be a tuple in R. That's the definition of polymorphism. And uh, let's let for gamma be the set of polymorphisms of gamma. And uh, the pair D and for gamma is called the algebra associated with gamma. And uh, this polymorphism and algebra plays a crucial role in a problem. So let's see an example. Uh, the mean operation is a polymorphism of horn k sat for any k. So consider ratio R of tuples UBW, UBWs such that U and U and V implies W. Then 1, 0, 0 is in R, and 0, 1, 0 is in R. If we take the mean operation, then we get 0, 0, 0, which is in R. And the ternary majority operation is a polymorphism of 2 sat, and the X plus 5 plus T module 2 is a polymorphism of 3 ling. The only polymorphism of 3 sat is just a projection. <coughs> okay. So, a crucial property is the following. To study query complexity of CSP gamma, we only have to look at polymorphisms. So, let gamma and gamma prime be, gamma prime be constant languages with the same polymorphism set. Then, if CSP gamma is, con if one of them is constant query testable, then another one, the other one is also constant query testable. So, in order to characterize constant query testable gamma, we only have to look at the polymorphisms. 
So our main result can be stated as follows. So if the following holds, if for gamma has a majority and a massive operation, which is called arithmetic condition, then CSP gamma is constant query testable. And otherwise, CSP gamma is not constant query testable. Here, majority, majority is uh, just majority. So it outputs A if the arguments are BAA or ABA or AAB. And the massive is operation that outputs B when the argument is BAA or AAB. It's like minority, but it, it doesn't impose any constraint when the argument is ABA. <coughs> Okay, so we only, in this talk, we only look at the first one because the second one is obtained by simple modification of existing work. Right. So let's look at, let's see some examples of arithmetic CSPs. The first one is two coloring, so it matches the, and the second one is unique game, so they match match the known results. And another interesting example is modular arithmetic. So suppose that uh, D is a set consisting of 0, 1 to the 29. And uh, we have two relations. The first one is x is equal to y modulo p, where p is sum of 2 or 3 or 5. And another one is x is equal to a modulo p, where p is uh, 1 of 2 to the 5, and a is 1 of 0, 1 to p of minus 1. And uh, well, there are several complicated examples, M more complicated example, but uh, well, we skip that. <coughs> so, yeah. So let's look at our algorithm. So the idea is transforming the given input IF to a trivial one by a sequence of reductions. So we have three reductions, factoring reduction, splitting reduction, and isomorphism reduction. So we look at these reductions for modular arithmetic because well, it shows some essence of these reductions. And uh, to describe these reductions, it is convenient to identify the domain 0, 1 through 29 with F2 times F3 times F5. OK. So the first reduction is factoring reduction. So we shrink the domain of each variable by factoring by an irrelevant congruence. So suppose that. Well, let's see the example. So we have three variables, y, x, y, z, and then we have two constraints, x is equal to y module 2, and x is equal to z module 3. And uh, suppose that f of x is 0 to 3. Then we can, well, then we can reduce this one, this, this instance to the bottom instance. Here, we just shrink the domain from F2 times F3 times F5 to F2 times F3. Well, why we can do that? The reason is that if we can, if we get satisfying assignment for the bottom instance, then we can recover the satisfying, re recover satisfying assignment for the top instance. Well, well, basically because F5 is co-prime to two and three. So this is the first reduction. And uh, the second one is splitting reduction. So suppose that, well, this is the, that, that this example is the bottom instance in the previous slide. So from this instance, we can, reduce, we can reduce to the bottom instance. Here, we split the variable x to x prime and x double prime. And the constraints are the same. <coughs> Well, this is, seems very easy, but uh, the, the key point of this reduction is that if we can get a satisfying assignment for the bottom instance, then we can get a satisfying assignment for the top instance. And uh, basically, 
this is and this is because the, well so called the Chinese reminder theorem holds for the arithmetic CSPs. So if we can get well yeah, that's the reason we can get this splitting reduction. So the final reduction we need is isomorphism reduction. So after applying factoring reduction and the splitting reduction, we can show that we can get the following situation. Relations in each connected component are isomorphisms, like the example shows. Then we test the consistency of F, the test the consistency of assignment within each connected component. This can be done easily. And if the test passes, then we contract the connected components. So we have two connected components. And uh, for the first component, we have isomorphism module 2. And uh, for the second component, we have isomorphism module 3. So we can easily test whether <coughs> these isomorphisms are satisfied or not by taking constant number of variables and test the consistency. And if the test passes, then well, we, we contract the instance to the, the bottom one to get the bottom instance. <coughs> then finally, we get a trivial instance, which is easy to. Well, actually, there is no, nothing to test here. If we can get the trivial instance, then it is always satisfiable, and uh, we can recover the uh, satisfying assignment for the original instance. So the only thing we test is the. The, this isomorph uh, the, the only thing we test is the consistency in connected components. <coughs> so here we show an example using arithmetic, um, modular arithmetic, but the details are very complicated. For example, we need to pre-process the instance. And uh, we just mentioned, I just mentioned that Satisfiability is preserved by two reductions, but actually we have to show that epsilon fairness is also preserved. And uh, we should query f on the fly because we don't have to read the whole f in order to get the constant query complexity. And uh, in the isomorphism reduction, relations may be not isomorphism, but just subjective homomorphisms. And uh, also, for general, CS, for general arithmetic CSPs, we need to perform these reductions d times. And the arithmetic condition, well, I didn't mention where this arithmetic condition is used, but the arithmetic condition is used to guarantee that the factoring reduction followed by a factoring, a splitting, and the isomorphism reduction always shrinks the domain. <coughs> and the final resulting, and the resulting query complexity is due to the d over epsilon squared. OK, conclusion. So we have achieved the dichotomy for testing assignments to CSPs. Major majority plus mass f is equivalent to constant query testability. Also, well, we achieved the trichotomy for, uh, for testing variant of CSP, uh, vari vari variant yeah, for testing a variant of the problem we, we explained. So it is called existing, existing CSPs. And uh, that is a CSP with exist, existentially quantified variables. Oh, sorry. So we have achieved a trichotomy for that problem with one sided error. And uh, here is the main conjecture. <coughs> uh, we have achieved the constant query testability. We have achieved the characterization of constant query testability. And uh, we want to sh achieve uh, characterization for sublinear query te testability. And the conjecture here is CSP D gamma is sublinear query testable if and only if the polymorphisms of gamma has a K near unanim unanimity operation for some K larger than or equal to 3. Here, KRA near unanimity operation is the uh, extension of majority. So which is, which outputs A if K 
k minus 1 of the argument. k minus 1 values of the argument is a. And uh, if the direction is true, it is easy to show, but uh, we don't know the converse. OK, that's it. Thanks. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, it is it is same as the two sets, so log n over log log n. Yeah, and there's nothing. And I think this log one can be improved. That's uh, another open problem. Polynomial time is Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if the CSP satisfies the ultimate condition, then it can be decided in polynomial time. Hmm? Uh, I mean, the question is constant query testability in price. Well, actually, I think the testability is harder than decidability because whole set and the swirling also requires linear <laughs> queries. <coughs> Thank you.